before Joe went back to the front. By that time, we'll have our livelihood wandering about the IP, moving at the moon. I can't do it, John. I can't do everything. You've not been sleeping. My grandfather used to have two sleeps. Him and his brother both. A first sleep, and then a second sleep. To bed when it got dark, then up in the middle of the night for a cup of tea and a natter. He used to call it a natter when he told me about it because it was a woman's word. Then back to bed with a second sleep, then up at first light, and out on the hill. What did he talk about? The dogs. Like all shepherds, they pretended not to care about them. But that's all they really talked about. Fed on porridge once a day and shot when the working days were up. They always had a dog inside on its last night and there was a big crack of thunder. Go on. And the dog did nothing more than sit up a little. But my grandfather put his hand on her head and just rested it there. Just for a moment. Guidance, really. No more. Gentlest thing I ever saw. God, he's not drinking. Tell him that before you go. He'd like that. What are these for? Cutters. What for? Barbed wire. Before an attack, the bombardment is supposed to... The, the wire will be cleared, they say. You can count on plum puddings, but it isn't. There's normally one hole in the wire and all the men funnel into it. Don't punch me, Joe! Don't! Whatever you do! But you've got to, mother. There's no choice. You, you can't run a barbed wire. The German machine gunners direct all their fire into the funnel. And everybody dies. Take this with you. Nice son. Let's 
sit for a while. say that now? I don't know. He's going to live. How his son is going to survive this war. I found it. Mama. Do what you can. What do you mean? Joe? When it's over. Has to be a better world.
Oh, she's under control. I'm likely to embarrass you in public. Bitterness doesn't suit you. You mean you don't want a dangerous mother? Doesn't it exhaust you, Edmund? How am I looking in the eyes of the world? Is there a more vain pursuit than politics? Hide one's own mother, if one has to. Your feelings have got the better of you. The thing about being humiliated, as I've been, is that it can't get worse, which is a kind of freedom. I'm with Rousseau, Edmund. As much truth as possible. Here we are. I'm one o'clock. Who are you? No, nope, sir. And what do you want with me? I'm here to change your life. Here she is, man of the family. at the end of the day so you can't see what you're doing and the eyes are tired anyway after a 12-hour shift. We've asked for cameras and lamps but they've told us to bring out one. We just can't afford to do that. There's been accidents. A thumb broke and half a finger cut off. Someday soon something terrible's going to happen. I mean, it doesn't make sense. More light would mean we'd make more boots, wouldn't it? Oh, I'm sorry, am I talking too much? You've got fire in your belly. I'm just after a better world, Mr Nubs, or... <laughs> Why are you laughing? National Union of Boot and Shoe Operatives. Nubs, or. My name is Chalcraft. <laughs> oh. I'd best be getting back. Your move. Who are you playing? Anyone who's passing. Well, make a move, union man. How do you know who I am? I was a detective. And you like the sound of your own voice. Where were you wounded? Mons. No, I meant where... Me. My job is to make sure the work is there when the war's over. I've seen too many men like you, Mr. What about the women? The day the war ends, I want every man in work. Which means the women back in the home. I might be in a position to help. Yes. 
Father, is he? Yes, of course. Oh, oh God. Um, has anyone did it? Well, no. As soon as he doesn't report back from leave. So? I'll come for him. But we've, um, we've got time and, and until then. I mean, you, you, you won't tell anyone until we've... Thank you. They shouldn't be disturbed. What? The Middletons. I have to go there. He's found God, isn't he? You've handed him on. The journey's just begun. It's a long way from sin to salvation. You know what I hate? How neat and tidy and all dressed up you are. Not your dress. Your speech. Martyred Martha. In love with giving and saving. In love with herself. Him not going back. It's the same as him running away. That's what they'll say, isn't it? Shh, he'll hear you. Isn't it, Grace? We'll get Doctor. Let me talk to him. He can't wait. He worked there, Storm. They're coming for him. And when they come for him, I want to be able to say that my son is not well. Where's my cat, Mother? You're a big baby. Warm and fat. There's a place between the cheek and the shoulder. When you haven't had a baby, it doesn't exist. And it does when you have. Something here. That's where a baby's head sits. And it's the smell. And it's the warmth. And when you're away, I can lean my head into it with a tilt. And there you are. If I were dead, would it be there? My Henry told me he loved me when we first met because of my baking. He was sat on the edge of my sofa with his little legs touching the floor, <laughs> his hands in his lap, all polite, and he looked at me with his little doggy eyes and he said, I knew he was going to say it, more cake. <laughs> more cake. <laughs> we were married a month later. Before we were married, Mr. Hankin, um, he uh, showed himself very keen. I mean, without actually doing anything improper. Now we're married. Not so keen. No, it's, um, it's more he doesn't. Keen, yes, but, um, does his, does it? Yes, usually, then no. Does it ever go in? No. I don't think so. You'd know, Norma. Has it ever? No. Is it me? No. 
Mama. Yes. Does he love you? Of course. Do you love him? He's my husband. Love him. Tell him how much you love him. Bath? Yes. What's a chat? Mm-hmm. What's the story this week? Something you don't want to tell me. No, I am excited. Hey. I love a good story before bed. Headaches? Stomach pain? Tremors? Fatigue? Shell shock. Shell shock. Physical cause, physical symptoms, physical cure. Probably some toxins have got into the blood from a, a shell blast. So, rest. Good food and motherly love. When does his leave end? Was there something that... Shell landing nearby. Norma told us about a man who was buried under earth. Punishment. What was that? There was no shell. How can that be? You were a doctor. Why is it called shell shock? He just said, he said it was punishment. Punishment? I want you to go and stay with Margaret. Go now, do you understand? I want to stay here. I go and do as you're told. Go on. Punished for what? You're a good soldier. You've been in France near on for two years. Leave him. No. John. What did you do? It was the postcard. What? They found out. Found out what? John. No. What postcard? It was for Bert. We didn't get it, did we, Mother? It was coded. So he'd know what was happening at the front. They, they must have found out what I was doing. They confronted me with it. I didn't feel like taking it from some pimply officer, so I pushed him. Fell backwards. He lost his balance. You can't do that to an officer. What did he do? I might have been shot. For into in, 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 What's the what's the word? What's the funny word? What's the matter with it? <laughs> Tied my wrists and my feet 
to, to the wheel of a cart. They left me out all night. In the open. Behind the lines, so there's no... But you... You hear everything. And you feel... I just, I, just, I just felt so... So ex exposed. <laughs> because of a postcard. patient men let the union in keep wages low the union won't fight you well, until the war is over then <laughs> when will that be 10 years 20 what you've been taking my advice so far which means my value to you is higher than it was I'll see to it I've got something for you on hanking now What's your news about Mr. Hankin? Impotentia coiundi. Mr. Burstow is gambling on my not knowing Latin, Edmund. Well, then he's safe. As long as I don't ask you for a translation. Uh, he can't fuck his wife. Oh, look, here they come. Hard times, Mrs. Hankin. I'm afraid the luncheon may disappoint. One just can't get what one wants. My well, husband's stock is... No. Mm. All one asks for is a lick of butter. Imagine what one can do with a lick of butter, Mrs. Hankin. Good day, Mr. Brester. knows Latin. He speaks Latin. Where do you think he learned to do that? Not public school. More wine, Mother. How's your Latin, Mr Hankin? Quite good, isn't it, Arnold? Oh, should we test him? What do you think? What was it that Mr Bairstow said this afternoon? I can't remember. Oh, I'm sure you do, Edmund. He was speaking about your business partner. Impotentia... Coyundi, yes. Yes, that's it. Anyone? <clears throat> Joe Middleton. Still here. Hasn't gone back. Why not? Can't, it seems. My question is whether I should tell the authorities. He's not a malingerer. Have you met him? No. No need to. The rural poor are tough. They know what it is to endure cold and wet. And they know how to slit a pig's throat, hear it squeal, watch it die and do it all over again. Well, but the pig doesn't fight back. And the big pigs don't send howitzer shells into the farmyard in support of their fellow creatures. When confronting danger, a man requires one of two things. Courage or stupidity. Why is it that everything you say I feel you've rehearsed before? Or even heard before? Why are you attacking me? To see what sort of a man is seducing my daughter so soon after the death of her father. Mother. Edmund? You must understand it's been such a short time since... My husband blew his brains out. <laughs> you were saying? Perhaps we should... Uh... No, no. Um, courage or stupidity. Stupidity is preferable because it requires no effort. And it has nothing fear, doubt, imagination to overcome. We won at Waterloo 
because Wellington's red squares were made up of the idiot poor. Like the idiot poor from this village, who died on the Somme? I used to hunt, Dr. Wiley, and the last time I went out, my horse refused to jump a hedge. Only he made this decision at the very last moment, and he chose not to tell me about it in advance. I came off. But you know, I wasn't in the least hurt. And something told me to stand up straight away. I don't know, perhaps I was trying to prove to myself that I wasn't really injured. Anyway, it was a mistake, because the rest of the hunt was on me. Twenty horses at full gallop, all committed to jumping that hedge, all coming at me. I stood stock still and waited to die. Oh. And they all went round me. If at Waterloo one had stood firm in one square against repeated charges of the French cavalry, I would like to think that in generations to come they might call it something finer than stupidity. Finish your food. Perhaps you could see him, Joe Middleton. Why does it matter to you? Well, we owe the Middleton family something. John Middleton was incarcerated because of what father did. I only ask. Well, consider it. You'd cure him, wouldn't you? Of course. If I felt I... You cured me. You could cure him. You don't fail, do you? In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Does God see everything? Yes. Does he decide everything? Yes. And the Bible says we're not to question him. So did God make you all like this? So prayer is to persuade God, who we must never question, to admit he's made a mistake and correct it. You haven't been coming to chapel, Grace. I've been looking after the farm. I've been working at the factory and a thousand other things. I know I'm looking after my son who... I've no time for chapel. Don't look at me like that. You must make time for God. Tell me what my son's done to deserve this. Right, he hasn't done anything. And it's not John. 
He's turned around, thanks to God. Me. Thanks to me. But you have turned to Grace. Away from God. My son is broken and lost because I haven't been down on my knees at the end of every day. But what does he want from me? He takes every hour my husband is away for himself. Isn't that enough? You do not support your husband in his religious observance. You have more time for Mr. Burstow than you have for prayer. What are you saying? I've seen you consorting with him. Consorting? You leave me no choice but to be indelicate in my speech. Furtive and secret meetings with a man who is vindictive. How dare you! I saved my husband from the poison that was killing him. Not you. Not God. You deny God's work in the world. I am tired of God. This is not you. This is his poison working in you. Get out of my house. You must let God back in your life. For your son's sake. You leave my son alone. Grace. Her. Uh, or me, John. That's not the right question. Him. I hurt John. He's not here yet. <clears throat> it's in his head. What do you mean? That he can't walk across a room. In his head. These hands shake. In his head. How? The things he's seen. The doctors? I haven't been there. I don't know. We can't know. We'll never know. Is your man? I can't stay long. Then I'll be quick. Good news. Your employer will recognise the union. It's a great day for the factory. And for the women that work in it. Thank you. I'll sit with you, son. My name's Agnes. She works at the factory. And the working way she works has made her unwell. She really is very ill, Mr. Chalcroft. It's a terrible thing to see in someone so young. I'll have another one, please. Chalcroft, the man from Nudzo. I'm in with him. He trusts me. Good. Is that what you came to say? No. You want more money. And we all need to eat. I think I might be giving you too much. That depends what value you place on other people not knowing that I work for you. Are you blackmailing me? The doctor's bills for poor Agnes. She's too important to lose. Edmund, come quickly. George. Welcome back, old chap. Thank you.
Morrell is here. Yes, he... Caro? He saved me. And now he's going to stay with me. I mean, he'll always look after me. I didn't come home when father died. You couldn't get leave. You don't need just... would have given it to me on compassionate grounds. I didn't ask. Your father would have understood. I didn't ask. Because I didn't want to leave my men. Do you see? I cannot tell you how much pride I have in a son who makes that kind of sacrifice. My brave boy. Pride. Sacrifice. Is that wrong? You are brave, aren't you? My wife's done everything the doctor told us to do. Do you want to go back? Yes. Why ain't the shaking stopping? Dr. Ramsey said it would. Hereditary weakness. Weakness of character. Passed down to him, probably through the male line. Your grandfather? Your father? Is there feeble-mindedness in your family, Mr. Middleton? Will you help me? Go and talk to him. Stay there. Dr. Wiley. We'll be here for Joe Middleton. With a warrant. You an army doctor? Nope. He can't be moved. I don't think we care too much about whether he can or can't be moved. Listen, there's a pub in the village with rooms. Go and rest up there for a couple of nights and I'll give you an easy prisoner to take back to France. We'll take him now. Now look here. There's something you need to know. His regiment is a pal's regiment. They're all from round here. You send him back to France, they'll be getting a pathetic moral invalid in amongst them. Morale matters. Pathetic moral invalids do nothing for it. We won't be taking him to put him back in the front line. That isn't what we do with deserters. Now, if you'll excuse me, no. Doctor. Listen, I'm not an army doctor, but I am close friends with the Provost Marshal. I don't think you mentioned your names. We'll be back tomorrow. Why are you doing this? Professional pride. Twenty-four hours. To make him better? Aye. And then they'll see he's not a coward.
What are you doing? They've gone. What have? My cows. What? What are they? You lost your cows. <laughs> what kind of a man loses an herd of cows? You're pathetic. Oh. Look at you. Your father and your grandfather before you. They farmed your farm. You my land. That's all you've ever wanted. Of course I do, because I despise you for letting it go. I've seen you spend whole days in the lamb and nothing gets done. And now you stop drinking, you don't work any harder because you're too busy going about with that minister's daughter whilst your wife works every hour she's got. This land is bigger than any one man's weakness. It deserves better than you. <clears throat> it's me, not him. He can't help it. It's only in him because I passed it down to him. Do you see? Joe can't help it. You, you can't punish him for something that's not his fault. It's me you should be taking. <laughs> what? No. You have to understand. It's me you should be taking. Not Joe. You've got to listen to me! Wait, 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 wait. No, Peter, I've got to tell you! Oh, they don't understand! Joe? Joe? will rescue from what's taken hold of you. Close your eyes. Dear Lord, in all your mercy, bring to this man peace and comfort. Drive out all the pain and the anger and the hate that has taken hold of his soul. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Father and the Holy Ghost, hold tight. Hold the book. Make this evil go. Make this so clean again. Pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this. I don't understand. Do you want to? Yes. Go and see Joe Middleton.
That cough? I put a little bit of death in you. I trusted you. Let's see. Ooh, imagine if you didn't have to go outside to do your business. Sometimes I don't. Oh. <laughs> How's Bert? It's a funny question, is it? Well, I haven't seen him. What? Well, I've kept on half expecting you to send him over to me. to see you. Joe, listen to me. Has Bert been back here? Bert! 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 Where is it? He can't have gone. He can't even walk across this room. Why don't you believe me? John, make them believe me. Help us. Oh, please. 
you help me find my children? Nothing much wrong with him. Job, Bert! Job! Hey, hey, you stay there. The village concludes next Sunday at nine on BBC One.